No. So today is the day. I hate this. I mean, I just hate, hate, hate this. Um, job interviewing is not fun. Um, especially if you go in and you don't really know what to expect because a lot of jobs are, um, have you take this aptitude test um, as well as like a spe uh, not spelling um, typing test, which is fine. I, I typing is one of my strong points. I don't know, I don't know why, um, but um, I mean I can type as as high as seventy five words a minute. So um, that that doesn't concern me usually. Um, I mean, you, when I'm nervous, I don't type that fast. Um, I might be around 50 or 60. <clears throat> but I don't ever pass the aptitude test. So, I always, um, I remember I did a job, um, this, the very first job interview I had, um, after my layoff was horrible. It was, I mean, this is the first one I had done since I was in my twenties. I mean, late twenties. Um, wait, maybe not. It was in my thirties, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it was in my thirties. Sorry. Um, but yeah, it's been a while. It's been 11 years since I had had to do any kind of job searching or job interviewing. And even then, um, the, the times that I had done it before were, um, apart from FYI, were, I mean, they were custodial jobs. I mean, basically the only thing that they care about is, are you going to be reliable? Are you going to be dependable? Are you going to, you know come to work every day on time. <clears throat> so, um, job interviewing is just not something that I ever did much of. Was I really particularly good at. <clears throat> because of the word retrieval issues I have, sometimes I can... <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> that first one, um, they had the aptitude test and the typing test and the 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 lady who the HR lady who was helping me at the time basically sat me down and said here you know here's the test here you do this and um, um, you have this much amount of time and once you're finished you know we will go from there well, I, I think their minimum on their typing was like 30 or 40, something ridiculously low, and I didn't pass the first time. And I didn't pass the aptitude test either. But the lady came, <clears throat> I, I may, I apparently may have just barely missed the aptitude, like I almost passed, kind of thing, and so <clears throat> she came back, and she said, I'm gonna let you take this again, and so I took it again, and this time I passed everything, so, now, this whole process, from the testing to the interview process, I was in that building for over two hours, it was brutal, um, and when I finally got to the actual interviewing, I sat down in this ginormous room um, with two gentlemen, you know, and my motto has always been just be honest, you know, just look people in the eye, be honest, be as pleasant as you possibly can. Um, what else, what else can you do, really? I mean, you, you do your research beforehand about the company, and, you know, you have a kind of an idea of, of 
questions you want to ask and how you want to answer questions and um and I did all of those things as uh, far as I know I did them okay but they asked me a question that I wasn't prepared for they you know because I had just recently been laid off um they asked me they said you know hey if if your company were to call you back today and s offer you your job back, would you take it? And it, I didn't know what to say. I mean, my motto and my rule is always tell the truth, you know? And in that moment, you know, it had only been weeks since I lost it. In that moment, my answer was yes, I would. And it cost me the job. Um, I had gone through a staffing agency um, to get this particular interview. And um, the staffing, uh, the recruiter lady called me back and, uh, to give me the feedback. And um, had said that they felt that I was uninterested in the position. So by me saying that I would take a job back that I had been at for 11 years, it meant I was not interested in their job. So, eh, it was fine. I mean, it was the first interview, and it was brutal. And I literally sat in my car for 20 minutes after crying. I cried for 20 minutes. It was just horrible. I mean, the whole thing is horrible anyway. But I'm nervous. Um, I have about two hours. Well, I have about an hour before I need to leave. <clears throat> I always, always end up being early. You know, like ridiculously early to these things. Most of the time I end up sitting in my car for a good while, which is fine. I, I go over my notes. I you know, go over, you know, calming myself a little bit, trying to breathe. My biggest, my, one of my biggest issues is usually beforehand. Um, I get sick to my stomach. I'm literally, this makes me sick whole process makes me sick. I don't normally get nauseous, but for whatever reason this morning, and I'm hoping it's related to my nerves, um, I'm feeling extremely nauseous. I took, I took a nausea pill, <coughs> and I'm hoping that that just kind of keeps it at bay. Um, and I try, I'm trying to tell myself that, you know, this is just another interview. I mean, I've been through so many now. I should be a pro, you know. And it's always nerve-wracking. I mean, it's always awkward. I'm not the most, I mean, not that I'm not social, but I struggle, you know, talking sometimes. and um, Even though I... I am and can be very articulate. And that's another problem that I run into with, that I've noticed with the jobs that I have gotten is because I am very articulate. Um, my book, I have a large vocabulary. You know, I don't sound like I'm stupid. You know, I'm not stupid. Not stupid. Um, it's not apparent that I have any kind of um, cognitive difficulties, if you will, I guess you could say. And so they'll hire me, and then when it comes to training, my issues start to come out. My learning issues start to come out. And <clears throat> the first job that went horribly wrong, I didn't tell them, um, hey, look, you know, I'm dyslexic. Give me a minute, I promise I'll catch up. Oh, I didn't tell them, and I think maybe if I had, it would have turned out a little differently. 
but um, we can't go back. Uh, I learned from it. Um, but then again, I told the second job, and they it still didn't matter. You know, I mean, I, I was hopeful. I mean, you know, when a company says, you know, oh yeah, we we are EOC, you know, you know, we we are an equal opportun equal employment opportunity, whatever. Um, you know, you hope if somebody says that, then that's what they are, and they'll follow the what, protocol, I guess you could say, and help um, provide you the assistance that you do need. It just doesn't work that way. I mean, it, it might work that way for somebody who is in a wheelchair or who, you know, has some kind of physical illness, you know, but for whatever reason, <clears throat> for the unseen, you know, I mean, if you, know, you are a major depressive or if you are um, somebody who suffers with a high level of anxiety or if you are dyslexic or ADHD or if it's not visible and you seem to be a normal functioning human being, I think it's harder for people to not to necessarily accommodate, but understand, maybe? I don't know. But people don't have the patience for it, I guess. I mean, if you're in a wheelchair, you know, and your accommodation is, hey, you know, I need... <coughs> <clears throat> I don't know what people need who are in wheelchairs, but um, it might be easier to provide those things. I don't know. Um, or if you're somebody who has diabetes and you have to take extra breaks to, you know, have snacks or you know, whatever, whatever it is. Those accommodations are... Maybe easier to understand, I guess. Anyway, so I'm wishing myself luck, basically, when I do these videos. I'm wishing myself luck because I know nobody else sees them, so that's fine. Um, everything's gonna be okay. I keep trying to tell myself that. They're waiting to believe it, though. I'm gonna go fix this mess that I've got going on here. Um, change my clothes. Go over some of my notes. Do something before I go to this interview. So, later.